Hey there, my name is Dewey Jones. I'm a Colorado off-roader and what I do is I film trail guides that show you the entire trail from start to finish but also have unique off-road action. Now today we are doing one of my favorites but it's not that hard of a trail. It's Argentine Pass. However, recently we did get a lot of snow so we're gonna see can we get to the top of the pass. Now we have Zach's XJ Cherokee because his KL is still down waiting on some parts. That's all it needs. Um, we also have a Ford Raptor today, which I'm really excited to show you guys, but you know me, I'm talking way too much. Let's get going. Let's go on the trail. So here we go. This is the trailhead, but before we get to the fun stuff of the actual trail, let me show you how it get here. From the front range, you're going to get on I-70 and you're going to head west. You're going to continue west until you run into Georgetown, exit 228. Here you're going to want to follow signs towards Ganella Pass. You're going to go on Ganella Pass. Now there's some switchbacks at the beginning, but then after those first switchbacks, there's a straightaway. And then you're going to run into a second switchback. Those switchbacks are where the trailhead starts. You're going to see a small road off to the side on the second turn. That's where you're going to want to get off to continue on to the trail. And let's get to the trail. All right, we are now on the trail heading towards Waldorf, which is the splitting point for either going to Argentine Pass or Mount McClellan. There is an easy route and a more challenging route to Waldorf, and of course we're going to take the more challenging route. Still, I'll tell you about both options as well as when the more challenging route has deeper water crossings that could potentially flood your ride. So by the end of this video, you're going to know your way around this area as well as all the knowledge you need to safely navigate it. Before we get too far along in the trail, this is a good point for me to tell you there is camping opportunities all over this trail, especially here at the bottom. However, on the route that we take, you're going to see spots all along the way, so keep your eyes out looking for those as we progress through the trail. Now this is our first major landmark, the creek crossing. The lower portion of the trail is fairly easy to navigate, but you want to make sure you get to this point as the various route options are on the other side of the creek. Also, we will be driving in this creek and the water levels can vary greatly depending on the time of year when you use it, so we'll make note of that as we go. We are definitely going to focus on Argentine Pass in this video, but before we focus in, let's talk about Mount McClellan. Now years ago, Mount McClellan was the first Colorado Trail I did and I probably did it in early June after a huge winter. It was definitely sketchy. All my Colorado friends were skiers and snowboarders, so I didn't have good intel. I had just started working for the Georgetown Loop Railroad, and my boss found out that I liked jeeping, so he told me to go check out Mount McClellan, which had historical significance as trains used to run up to the top, which was over 13,000 feet. Well, June was too early to do the trail to the top, so I ended up breaking through some sketchy snow drifts. I eventually encountered one that was just too sketchy to attempt, so I stopped, pulled out a chair, and had a beer. After Mount McClellan, my next trail was Jenny Creek, and I am excited to bring you that trail guide in the next few weeks. It's gonna be a then versus now trail guide, so definitely look out for that one. Anyway, I am getting off track, so I'll film a full trail guide for Mount McClellan where I'll show you and talk about all its historical significance. But let's get back to Argentine Pass right now. This is our entrance to 248.1B, also known as Powerline Road. You'll see why Trails Off Road calls it this in short order. Now Funtrex calls this their alternate route as their book follows the Argentine Central Railroad grade to Waldorf. We'll cover that in a future video, but for now we're going to focus on this very fun alternate route. If you were going to take this route, I'd have high ground clearance, a true 4x4 system with a low range, and if your ride isn't built for water crossings, I'd consider a snorkel. Now I wanted to bring Rob's Jurassic Jeep here as I feel this is a Jurassic type environment, but as you'll see, there is a risk of Colorado pinstripes if you go on this route. Alright now if you look to the left you're going to see power lines. That's basically why I think this section got named Power Line Road. Pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. Let's move on to the next feature of 248.1b.
All right, now I'm pretty certain this is the section at milepost 1.7 called the rock yard. Now the rock yard isn't that impressive, but the camping is, and that's basically what Trails Off-Road focused on in this section. Now we are gonna get to some better rock yards coming up, but let's keep moving, and I'm gonna tell you about getting some really fancy pinstripes for your vehicle. So I often get asked, Dewey, why did you pick yellow for your Jeep? Well, it might be surprising to hear, I actually prefer green and have had three green Jeeps, including a Rescue Green JK prior to this Dozer Jeep. Now, why? Simply, green shows Colorado pinstripes or trail pinstripes better than my Dozer does. I mean, it's a Jeep, so who really cares, but since it's my daily driver, I want it to look good. Many of these local trails have high pinstripe risk, so I'm going to start adding that to our end of the trail review in these videos. Alright, we're now at the 2.2 mile mark. This is where the intersection with 248.1 is. That takes you to the easier section. So if everything to this point has been a little bit too rough on you or you're beating up your vehicle a little bit too much, you can take this little side road and you can go to the easier section to get to Waldorf. Okay, now we are on the good stuff, the water crossings. This is mile 2.4, the rocky riverbed, and it takes us all the way to our first river crossing, or creek crossing. When we filmed the trail guide, the river levels, the water levels were just low. They weren't that great. But I'm going to show you at the end of this video what this rocky riverbed looks like when the creek is flowing. Now let's get to those water crossings and I'm going to show you the difference between late season and early season water crossings so you can decide when you want to do this trail. This is the longer but probably easier of the two creek crossings. Now we shot this at the end of summer on September 12, 2020. Unfortunately, this is when the creek will be at its lowest since it is dependent on snowmelt. We'll watch the Raptor and Cherokee at these lower levels, but then I'll show you me during early season. As you'll learn later, there is a very narrow window for having the entire trail network at your disposal. And now here's me in the deeper water. We are now back on the trail and we're heading towards the next creek crossing. This one is deeper than the one we just did, so we'll do the same thing and I'll show you the guys at the late season water levels, then I'll show you me at the early season water levels. Now if you want to see more vehicles cross the crossing when it's at its deeper levels, then check out my how to find trails video which I filmed at this location during the early season. Now that we're back on the trail, we first encounter some more Colorado pinstriping. Next we'll encounter some rocky areas, some areas with power lines, some camping spots, a rocky climb in the trees, and some off-camber areas till we reach our next landmark, a connection with the easier trail. Now we won't be taking that connection, instead we're going to continue on to another optional water crossing as well as the final rocky road climb to Waldorf. We're now approaching another intersection where we're going to stay straight to stay on B. However, if we turn left, we get across another great water crossing. Now these clips are from June, and unfortunately I didn't have time to go further back into that network, but I bet you there's some great camping back there. If you've been back there, let us know in the comments what it's like, and maybe we'll explore it in the future.
from this intersection, we start the last part of the alternate route, the Rocky Road. Now this section will rejoin the main route, which will take us to Waldorf. At Waldorf, we'll run into some of my friends who are wheeling Toyotas. Along the rocky road, there is a brief section where the rocks let up and you get a glimpse at the type of scenery that you'll be encountering on the climb up to the top. The rocky road is rougher than it looks, but it is no problem for our vehicles. However, on trail sections like this, I'd recommend skid plates to protect your underbody. At the top of rocky road, you will want to go left, but you could take the K route, which is fun, tight, and steep. That will pop you out near Santiago Mine and Mount McClellan. However, since we're going to Waldorf, we're going to go left at this point. So that was the lower section. We're still going to continue up to Argentine Pass. We haven't encountered much snow yet, but we're going to see where it goes. But let's hear from these guys what they thought of that Route B. So Argentine Pass is one of my favorite trails in the entire state. It's scenic, it's fun, it's technical, but it's not too technical either. It's something you can get a pretty stock vehicle up. I mean, I wouldn't bring a Subaru Outback up here, <coughs> but once you get to the top, you got a lot of great views, kind of a playground and all that, and it's a good time for all driving levels. So yeah, it's my first pass, first time doing uh, this trail actually, but I can see why these guys like it so much. It's very scenic, very beautiful landscape. Not too difficult. Uh, I think it would be really fun to do it in the spring when the when the water is a little bit higher. But yeah, definitely doing it again. It was fun to wheel with these guys. Anyway, we're back on the trail, and I used to always think that this little section was still part of the Argentine Central Railroad grade. However, I might be wrong. According to Gaia, Route K actually is the original route, but we'll investigate that further when we do the Mount McClellan Trail Guide. This is Waldorf, and in 1860s, it had the highest post office at 11,666 feet. The mine structures burnt down in the 1980s, and this is all that's left. Unfortunately, someone took down the barriers as they are trying to rehab the area, but this area is highly toxic, especially to children and pets. Wheeling on this section, although fun, releases highly toxic metals and is dangerous to your health. We found this out after talking to some of the Forest Service people who said the area is under active rehabilitation. Although we hung out at Waldorf for quite a while and had a great time with our friends from Colorado Overland Meetup, we need to finish this guide. So now we are on 724.1 and need to go about 2.3 miles to reach the top and see those incredible views. However, we filmed this on September 12th and we had just gotten an early season snowstorm. But the weather was nice this day, so the question is, will it be clear to the top? The trip to the top isn't that bad, but I'll show you the type of rocks and the terrain that you'll encounter as we go. Now this is a good time to talk about passing on narrow shelf roads. Remember, uphill traffic has the right of way, but oncoming vehicles should work together to safely pass, even if that means backing up a little as the uphill traveler. As the photo shows, rollovers are possible in the area, and this rollover happened pretty close to when we did the trail. Anyway, please off-road safely. But let's get to our next landmark so we can keep on moving. All right, now I think this water crossing is the halfway point from the start at Waldorf to the summit. I would say that this next section is probably the most dangerous part of the trail due to it being on higher cliffs and you also have the toughest switchback which is on this segment. We are also above 12,000 feet so you are at risk of running into snow. Let's talk a little bit about that. Now the best time to do the trail to reach the summit is between July and September. Now the water crossings are at their deepest early season when the sun has had a chance to melt the snow. That's probably June, maybe late April, but early season for sure. Now speaking of snow, let's see how we are doing on this September 12th, 2020. Ooh. 
while we push through the snow, let me give you our trail review on Argentine Pass. Overall, it is a fun moderate trail with enough danger to keep it interesting. It probably should not be your first moderate trail and I do expect the ratings to get harder with time due to the ease of access from Denver. Now my favorite parts of the trail are the early season water crossings and the middle season views. My suggested minimum vehicle requirements are at least 8 inches of ground clearance, a low range for control, skid plates for underbody protection, and tires with good grip. There's also a lot of dispersed camping opportunities, but the trail can get crowded. Now the ratings I have put on the screen are our subjective ratings in comparison to other trails we have covered. Now if you're new here you may want to check out some of those older videos as I bet you there's a trail you would love to do. Guys, we are probably as far as I'm going to take you guys on this trail guide here, but I am going to finish the trail guide with old footage from me last year and we'll cover the whole entire trail so you guys know how to navigate it. Here is the rest of the trail. Now this switchback right here is known as the toughest part of the trail and you may have to make a multiple point turn to turn the corner. In this video I was aired up and I was only in four wheel drive low, no lockers. I had no issues climbing it. However, I personally would recommend a true four wheel drive low system for this obstacle. Finally, here is the top. This was my first flight with the drone and I didn't know what I was doing. Actually, I still don't know what I was doing, but the views are pretty. If you look down in the valley, you'll be able to see the starting points for both Chihuahua Gulch as well as Peru Creek. We have trail guides on those if you want to check Good break trail, but it's extremely risky. Look behind me. That is a pretty steep, and we've had enough excitement on these trail guides uh, for me. Thank you so much for making it this far in the video. You have just watched the entire trail guide. I hope it was useful to you. Now, for those of you that like a longer video, here is a bonus segment showing off both Santiago Mine as well as a neat waterfall that's near the trails. However, first we're gonna have to get ourselves off of the mountain. So we're gonna go down the mountain, get back to Waldorf, and then we're gonna go up to Santiago. I personally think the views are better going down, but what do you think? Here is Santiago Mine, which was recently reopened after a lengthy restoration. Now the mine was opened in 1935 and the U.S. Forest Service got the site classified as historical in 2013. They closed the site in 2015 for that lengthy restoration. Prior to its closing, everything was still in great shape and you could even see the rails were in place to the mill. It was just reopened in 2020 and I think they did a great job even though I wish the rails could have been saved. Pretty rocky. And we use these beer ratings to rate a trail's roughness. So here we go. With ginger from Left Hand Brewing Company. It's a seasonal beer. Thank you guys so much for watching this video on Argentine Pass. This waterfall is pretty sweet and it's easily accessible and I'll show you how to get here in a second. Just a little tip for you guys, if you guys drive down the switchback to where I'm at now, looking at this view, you can climb a short little distance to see that awesome waterfall. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed Argentine Pass Trail Guide. Now, thank you guys so much for being subscribers or all of the new subscribers that we have gotten. That has been awesome. Now, I know not all of you guys have seen the old videos, so you may want to click up there because there's some good ones in that. Also, YouTube thinks you'll like this one, so click that. And if you're not a subscriber, click over here. Thank you guys so much for watching.